Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to proteins, the structure of amino acids, R groups, and then we'll finish with a summary. So proteins are very important molecules found in all organisms, and we describe them as being organic molecules, so they contain carbon as well as some other elements, and they have many important functions as one of the most abundant molecules in all of the body. So one of the biggest roles they have is the structural role, where they can be found building up a lot of structures found in the body. For example, muscles, as they build up the strength and the structure of the muscle fibers, they form the structure of tendons, which help attach muscles to our skeleton and allow us to move at joints. They also have some part to play in bone as well. And these are just a few examples of the structural role they have. They're obviously found in all organs across all of the body. As well as a structural role, they have metabolic roles as well, with reference in particular to enzymes. So an enzyme is a type of protein and there are many, many types of enzymes in the body. And enzymes catalyze reactions whereby certain substrates or molecules need to undergo a particular process or reaction. They come into contact with the enzyme and the reaction is catalyzed to turn them into products. And there are lots of types of proteins involved in reactions across the cells and in cell membranes. They have roles in transport as well, so transport for specific substances. For example, this is a diagram of the molecule hemoglobin. And hemoglobin, or Hb, is used in transporting oxygen in the blood. And it can transport oxygen from our lungs to all of our tissues that need respiration. So chemically speaking, like carbohydrates and lipids, proteins are made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So here we have one amino acid, which is kind of the building block of a protein. And you can see we have carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, just like the other two families of molecules. However, proteins actually contain other elements, and some of these other elements include nitrogen, and some of them contain sulfur and phosphorus too. So in this example of an amino acid, we have the original elements we just mentioned, carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, but we also have nitrogen in every amino acid, and in some amino acids we have sulfur as well, and now and then we can see phosphorus too. So we need to understand the chemical structure of amino acids. Amino acids are basically the building blocks used to make any of the proteins we use in the body. So the amino acids are the monomers. So here we have a group of amino acids, and there are lots of different types of amino acid. So individually, each unit is a monomer. And if we were to add these together into a long chain, we form a polymer, and a polymer of amino acids is always known as a protein. So proteins are polymers of amino acids. And all amino acids, regardless of which one, they all have the same basic structure. So here's a picture of an amino acid. All amino acids have the following components. So they all have a central carbon, or a carbon atom. So in the center here we have this carbon, and it's right in the middle. This is the central carbon. And this carbon is attached to various different things. It's bonded to a carboxyl group, which is COOH. So the carboxyl group is this group here. And a carboxyl group you can see is COOH because we have another carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then an OH group. So the carbon connects firstly to this COOH group. And then the next group it binds to is an amino group, which is NH2. So here we have the amino group and you can see it's a nitrogen bound to two hydrogens. And that's on the other side to the carboxyl group. There's always a single hydrogen atom poking off that central carbon too. So here's the hydrogen atom, and that always exists just on its own. And then finally, the last of the four things joined to that central carbon is an R group, or a variable group. And normally, for a general amino acid, we just state this as being R. So all amino acids have this central carbon with these four groups attached to it. In life, there are 20 naturally occurring amino acids found, and each of them have a different R group. So the only thing that varies between these 20 types is the R group. These amino acids will have exactly the same structure everywhere apart from the R groups. And this will be one R group, and this would be a different R group. And it goes all the way up to 20. So amino acids are the monomer units to make proteins. All amino acids have the same basic structure, but with different R groups. So now that we know that R groups can vary, we know that each amino acid has a different chemical R group, and they can vary in their different properties. So first of all, they can vary by their size. So here we have two different amino acids, and you can see that their R groups are different. 
On the left we have one amino acid called glycine, and on the right we have one called lysine. And these examples of amino acids don't worry about the structures or the names, this is just to illustrate the differences between R groups that you can have. So don't worry about learning these. So on the left we have glycine. We've got the amino group on the left, or the amine group. We have the carboxyl group on the right, the hydrogen atom on the top, and the R group is just an H this time. The lysine label the same stuff. We have the central carbon here. We have the amino group, although this time it's just swapped around to the different side. The carboxyl group, the hydrogen atom, and this time we have a quite different R group, which is very complicated. But you can see that the R groups differ massively in their size. One of them is a huge chain of atoms with an amino group at the end, and this one is simply just a hydrogen atom. So size can vary massively between R groups. The next difference they can have is that of polarity. So remember, polar molecules have an area where there's a positive charge and an area where there's a negative charge. So here we have two amino acids again. This one on the left is called alanine, and this one on the right is called cysteine. Again, don't worry too much about the details or the names, but looking at the R groups again, the one for alanine is just a CH3, and this is non-polar. So it has no charge distribution across it, it's just even, and so it's not polar at all. The R group on cysteine, however, is polar because it's not the CH2 that gives it the polarity, it's the sulfur and the hydrogen. The sulfur gets a delta negative because it's more negative, and the hydrogen gets a delta positive because it's, some of its charge has been taken away. So this one is polar, and so this demonstrates that you can have differences in polarity because of these R groups. Another property that R groups differ in is their charge. So this is quite similar to polarity. So on this side we have lysine, which we saw earlier, and here we have aspartic acid. Again, each types of amino acid. We can see the same general structure up here as before, and the R groups again are different. This time we have a long chain, and down here we have an extra hydrogen which has a positive sign. So this one is positively charged. On this side we have different atoms, but we have a negatively charged oxygen, so this one is negatively charged. So we can describe both of these not only as being charged, but in other ways too. This one we describe as being a basic amino acid, i.e. it acts as a base, because it's accepted a hydrogen ion from another acid. Remember, bases mop up hydrogen ions. And we can describe this one as being an acid, because it's lost a hydrogen ion, and so we've got this negative charge. So positive amino acids are called bases, negative ones tend to be called acids. Don't get confused by the idea that they're all called amino acids, that's something to do with this carboxyl group. So all of these differences in R groups means that every one of the 20 amino acids have different properties, and so we can make a variety of proteins, again, with different properties too. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.